Hello my soccer universe. Uh, slightly, slightly different setup because I got the big screen from work and I decided, well, then I have to do it from the cell phone and I made the whole contraption up there. But I think the video quality will be better but it also will be slightly awesome shooting now during daytime because I have the chance and I thought, well, I have the chance I can talk about uh, a true classic and I had it in the office so I got it now. This is among the, my top three soccer books. Inverting the pyramid. This, if you like soccer, task, football tactics, soccer tactics, this is your bible. This uh, gives the entire history of uh, football tactics in sometimes excruciating detail, but it's very well told. Uh, the book is by Jonathan Wilson, who is a very well-known uh, journalist. He writes very well. He's. I have also another book, another book from him about Argentinian soccer. It's really, really, really cool stuff. And uh, there's also some really nice. I mean, he really starts from the very beginning. Uh, let me just see. He has nice diagrams there. Let me see. Scotland, England, the first international. These were the lineups, and you know, ah, not many, many defenders there. It was all about attack, attack, attack. That was 1872. Um, and this is the first pyramid that he said. You know, if you look at this, this is more or less a pyramid from the goalkeeper at the tip to a lot of strikers on the front. Um, and he goes through all the evolutions that people came up with uh, a section near and dear to my heart and i will read you something about this of course the contribution of austria that's hence why i'm wearing my austria shirt because i think this finds it's all it contains my favorite passage and i'm reading to you that passage of course we have here matthias schindler from the famous wonder team um, then the famous England Hungary game is in there. It's from the starting from the pictures to the stories, it's just a joy to watch here. Uh, Wolves, legendary Wolves uh, coach Stan Kalis working on his tactics board. It's just fun. It's just fun. Bela Gutmann in Benfica, this guy, he is a very in interesting man. Starting, you know, Hungarian, had a lot of influence on Austrian soccer as well. But most importantly, he coached Benfica to two European titles and then he left and cursed them and the curse is still on. But going back to the pyramid, um, I think what he uh, says is that uh, when was it inverted? Is under Carlo Angelotti, and I found this uh, the most interesting. Let, let me find quickly where does he have it? The famous Christmas tree. Um, famous Christmas tree formation under Angelotti, the 4 3 2 1. Which I actually I didn't think that it was such a, a defensive style, and he, he, he never um, calls it a turning style. Um, but it is remarkable. Let me see if I can find it otherwise. No, there are no graphics, but I, I, I remember when he said the 4 3 2 one uh, system. So four or four defenders, um, three kind of defensive midfield players, then uh, two behind the lone striker. This was kind of the, the inverting of the pyramid. It's written in excellent, impeccable style. Uh, it goes through all the major revolutions of soccer, be total football, all its precursor, um, Maslow, uh, Dynamo Moscow, that's something I found very interesting. Also through Catenaccio, who uh, he rightly points out that yes, it's a defensive system, but if it's given with the right players, like it was in the 60s with Inter Milan and to a certain uh, um, degree uh, AC Milan, it's actually a very attractive system because it focuses on the counter-attack which can be super exciting if you have the right players. If you just uh, do it to park the bus, to quote Mourinho, then of course it won't work. Uh, the only thing, and I don't know if there is um, now an updated version, it kind of ends around 2009-2010, so uh, that's a little bit missing. But along the pictures, um, I love this one. 
Riquelme and Modric, the last playmaker of the old generation, the first of the new. That says it all. Um, and you know, we know that Modric now is a great player, but he is not your classic number 10 a la uh, Platini, Maradona and so on. But uh, he wills from different, a little bit of deeper positions, so absolutely excellent. I'll give it a reading sample, I think, and then I cannot tell you how much I recommend this book. I really cannot tell you. This is an absolute uh, engrossing lead. So let's start with it. It goes, of course, um, this is on the uh, uh, chapter How Fascism Destroyed the Coffee House. Um, it starts with the Austrian Wunder team under Hugo Meisel and then uh, goes into the big teams of Vittorio Pozzo of Italy that won back-to-back -back world championships and this here is about the 1934 World Cup. Italy and Austria. Pozzo and Meisel met in the semi-final, but by then the tournament had already begun to slink into disrepute. Austria were far from innocent, having been involved in a brawl in their quarter-final victory over Hungary. But it was the 1-1 draw between Italy and Spain at the same stage that marked the descent of the tournament into violence. Monti, for all his ability, was quite prepared to indulge in the darker arts, while Ricardo Zamora, the Spain goalkeeper, was battered so frequently that he was unable to play the replay the following day. Sources vary on whether the three or four Spaniards were forced to leave the field through injury, but whichever, Spain were left feeling aggrieved as a diving header from Merza gave Italy a 1-0 win. The anticipated clash of styles in the semi-final was a damp squib. Schindler was marked out of the game by Monti. Austria failed to have a shot in the first 40 minutes and Italy won by a single goal. Merza, bundling into Heden's replacement, Peter Plazza, and Enrique Guaita, another of the Oriundi, forcing the loose ball over the line. Oriundi is an um, uh, Italian national player but foreign descent, so I, I, one of the uh, guys, he was uh, actually born in Argentina, but of course he had Italian heritage, so he could play for uh, the Azzurri. It was left to Czechoslovakia, who had beaten Germany in the other semi, to defend the honor of the Danubian school. At times they threatened to embarrass Italy and took a 76th minute lead through Antonin Puch. František Svoboda hit a post and uh, Jirši Zobotka missed another fine chance, but with 8 minutes remaining, Orsi equalized with a uh, drive that swerved freakishly past František Planicka. Seven minutes into extra time, a limping Merza crossed from the right, Goita helped it on and Angelo Schiavio who later spoke of having been driven by the strength of desper desperation, beat Josef uh, Cittorocchi to fire in the winner. Mussolini's Italy had the victory so desired, but elsewhere the strength of the desire and the methods to which they were prepared to stoop to achieve it left a sour taste. In the majority of countries, the World Championship was called a sporting fiasco, the Belgian referee uh, Jean Langenus said, because besides uh, the will to win and all sporting considerations were non-existent and because, moreover, a certain spirit brooded over the whole championship. A meeting with England that November, the so-called Battle of Highbury, only confirmed the impression, as Italy reacted badly after Monty broke a bone in his foot in a second-minute challenge with Ted Drake. For the first quarter of an hour, a first quarter of an hour quartet. Uh, there might just as well uh, not have been a ball on the pitch as far as the Italians were concerned, says Stanley Matthews. They were like a man possessed, kicking anything and everything that moved. England capitalized on the indiscipline to take a 3-0 lead. But after Pozzo uh, has calmed his side at halftime, they play stirringly to come back to 3-2 in the second half. Beneath the aggression, the cynicism, Italy were uh, unquestionably talented, and they retained the World Cup in 38 with what Pozzo believed was his best side. Again, the focus was on defensive solidity. The big secret of the Italian squad is its capacity to attack with the fewest amount of men possible, without ever distracting the halfbacks from the defensive work. Zappa wrote. Austria had been subsumed by Germany by then, but a team formed by the two semifinalists of the previous competitions fared poorly and lost after replay to Karl Rappan, Switzerland, in the first round. Karl Rappan was kind of the grandfather of Catanaccio, in a way, Austrian, who got some success with Switzerland. So uh, that in itself is one of the huge stories of the third, third is how... Uh, unified Austrian German team completely failed at the World Cup. Uh, Czechoslovakia went out to Brazil in the last eight, but Hungary progressed to the final for the last showdown between the Danubian school and Pozzo. 
Italy proved too quick and too athletic, and with Michele Andreolo, another Oriundo, who had replaced Monti as the Centro Mediano, keeping a check on Georgi Sauroshi, the Hungarian centre forward, Meisel's conception of the game was made to look sluggish and old fashioned. It did not pass without lament. How shall we play the game? the French journalist Jean Eskenazi asked, as though we're making love or catching a bus. But pass it did. This last quote. How shall we play the game as though we're making love or catching a bus still is true today. If you look at the beautiful game, it's usually intricate passing, but it's kind of slow and will always be killed with speed. This was true in the 30s. I think it's true in the 50s. It's true in the 70s. It's true in the 90s. It's true today. Uh, more beautiful play is slow. More fast play is the successful and I think um, we, it's a need for speed in soccer. The more athletic, the more fast team will always win out in the end. And with that I leave you again. I cannot tell you how much I can recommend this book. Read it. This is in my top three. Probably my second favorite soccer book. I have my favorite soccer book here too. But that comes in so many editions meanwhile that a little bit later. Hope you enjoyed this re-reading tip. Um, as I said, read that one. You will thank me later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.